Okay, we are going to take a look at Chainlink. Chainlink is an Oracle service providing a very convenient gateway interface to retrieve external data feeds. So this could be commodities prices, uh, weather, the results of sporting events, uh, anything that exists out there in the world. And this is especially powerful in the scope of a blockchain network because we don't have to programmatically inject these data feeds into a smart contract via the Chainlink node as an intermediary or a gateway. Uh, these data feeds can be retrieved uh, dynamically when we invoke a smart contract. So let's take a look at how Chainlink would function in the scope of a permissioned Kaleido network. So what I've done is I've created an environment running the quorum client with Raft consensus and I've spun up a single node. Now using our drop-down menu, we're going to go ahead and add the Chainlink service. You can see our various other services in here. We'll go ahead and select Chainlink and click Add. Awesome. So this will take a few moments for the actual pod to initialize and the Chainlink container uh, to come up. So we'll give this a few seconds, refresh our environment, and we should see an active instance of our Chainlink service. Awesome. And we do. So now it's time to start interacting with Chainlink. Using our drop-down menu, we can go ahead and take a look at the Chainlink dashboard. And we're greeted with a few interesting pieces of information. We see the API endpoint, which we need to programmatically interact with the Chainlink node. We see a username password combination, which we need in order to access the Chainlink user interface. And we see two smart contract addresses. We see a link address and an Oracle address. Now in the public permissionless Ethereum blockchain, this link address is actually a token smart contract that's used to store the balances of the different users. And they're going to leverage the intrinsic link token uh, in order to allow that Chainlink node, Chainlink Oracle, uh, to do real work. Uh, the Oracle smart contract address will actually store the results um, of our external API query uh, and then return that to a different smart contract. So let's go, go ahead and see how all this works together. I'm going to leverage the Kaleido sample gallery for this. Um, I've already configured um, a username, password, application credential, a node endpoint, and those three things we just looked at. The API endpoint for our Chainlink node, the link address, and the Oracle smart contract address. So let's put all the pieces together. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a Chainlink job. And this is what the smart contract is going to pass to the Chainlink node to let it know what it wants to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example job spec, and then using our username password, we will access the Chainlink dashboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and we can see that we want to do a git method on this bitstamp URL to return the ticker price for Ether. So let's go ahead and log into the Chainlink dashboard. And now this is where we want to leverage those username password. So we'll take our username and we will take our password. And go ahead and sign in. Now we want to go ahead and create a new job and we'll use that sample job template that's reaching out to the bitstamp URL uh, to create our new job ID. So if we return to our sample, we can see our very trivial job spec here that's going to return us the price of Ether uh, specified as an unsigned integer. So we'll create the job and what we're concerned with actually is the job ID, um, this value right here. This is what the smart contract needs in order to pass to the Chainlink Oracle node and that's going to let the node actually know specifically what we want it to do, right? Call a git against this URL and return us the price of Ether as an unsigned integer. Okay, awesome. So We'll go ahead and copy this job ID and we'll inject that into our sample. Okay. Before deploying to the blockchain, let's take a quick peek at the smart contract that's actually going to return us the price of Ether. Um, it's, it's, it's very trivial. This is the actual method that we're concerned with. This is what the Oracle smart contract is going to call back to this contract, the fulfill Ethereum price method. 
um, and passing it the job ID so it knows what to do. So let's go ahead and deploy this to the blockchain and we'll see how all of this fits together. So the smart contract has been deployed. So if we go ahead and take a look at our environment and our block explorer, we should see three unique smart contracts here. We see the instantiation of the Oracle smart contract and the Link smart contract. And we see the instantiation of our fulfill ether price method contract. Um, and once we actually request the price, we should see two more transactions come in here. We should see one invoking our ether price and one invoking the Oracle smart contract. So let's go ahead and request that price of ether. And we see that it returned us 109.46. And we can continue to call this method and it will continue to return us the price proxied from the Oracle smart contract. So now if we go back to our environment, we should see a handful of additional transactions. We see the invocation of our Ethereum smart contract, and we see the invocation of the Oracle smart contract, which via a callback returns the price to our Ethereum smart contract. So hopefully that was a helpful walkthrough of how Chainlink can function in a permission Kaleido network. Uh, thanks for watching.